Hi, so in this session we will be learning about the sampling process or the different methods of sampling. First of all, let us understand what is a sample. Now, a sample can be defined as a representative group of a large population. Now, suppose we need to study about uh, some attribute of the population. Suppose we need to study the average height of the people living in your town. So, it is not exactly possible or it is not suggested that you go on each and every household, measure the heights of each and every person and get the average. That will be a very costly and a very lengthy process. Okay? So, if you need a quick result, we need to find out some other way. So, what we do is we select a sample from a group of people which we have and we take the average of the heights of those people and assume that the average height of the sample is equal to the average height of the population because the sample comes out from the population itself. Now this method has certain drawbacks of course because the sample which we select might not be the exact, might not give the exact average as the population. There might be a difference in the means. Okay? So that error can be minimized by selecting a proper sampling process. The way of selecting a sample, suppose if I select all the children from the population and measure the average height, of course the average height of the sample will be quite less than the whole of the population, right? So we need to have a proper selection of the sample from the population. Now how do we do that? Now there are different techniques, there are different ways to select your sample. The different methods can be classified into two sampling techniques that is probability sampling and non-probability sampling. Now probability sampling has four different types. The first one being simple random sampling. The second one is the systematic sampling. The third one is stratified sampling and the fourth one is cluster sampling. Okay? So these are the four different methods of probability sampling. We will be looking into them one by one. And the four types of non-probability sampling are convenience sampling, quota sampling, judgment sampling and snowball sampling. So now let us start with the first method which is the simple random sampling. Now consider your population and suppose we need to find the mean of the IQ level of this population. Now again we have limited resources, we have limited time. So what we need to do, we need to select a sample and study that sample for the IQ level and assume that the population has the same level. So in simple random sampling what we do is we need, we randomly select an element and make a study on it. Now there are two ways of doing this. Okay? Now each and every person from the population has equal chance of selection. Okay? So what I do is I select one person, make a study on him and send him back to the population. So the next time I select another person, he has the same probability, right? 1 by n, 1 by the total population. Suppose the population is 100, the sample is to be 10. So selecting one sample out of 100 will be 1 by 100. So the probability of selecting any one of them each and every time will be 1 by 100. Okay? So in the first case, I select an element, I select a sample, I study his IQ level and send him back in the population. Then I go for another selection and I repeat the process until I get 10 different IQ scores. So what happens in this, we are selecting a sample and sending it back to the population. That is called as simple random sampling with replacement. Okay? I randomly select a sample from the population, I conduct a test on him and send it back to the population. I replace him again. So that is SRSWR, simple random sampling with replacement. Now there is another way of doing this simple random sampling that is simple random sampling without replacement. What do we do in this? We select a sample, make a study on him and I keep him out of the population for the next sample to be selected. Okay? So what happens in this? I do not include the same person for the IQ test again. Okay? So this type of sampling is called a simple random sampling without replacement. Now the probability of selecting a person in simple random sampling with replacement remains the same 
whereas the probability in simple random sampling without replacement the conditional probability remains the same. We will be discussing about that in the later part of probability. Now this type of sampling simple random sampling can only be effective if the population is homogeneous, if the population has a similar characteristic. Okay? Suppose if the population has different characteristic the, the study which I conduct will be totally biased. Hence it is necessary condition that the population is homogeneous having similar characteristics only then I can use the simple random sampling. The next one comes the systematic sampling. Now what is systematic sampling? As the name suggests we need to have certain order to be selected. Now suppose I need to do a research on the people facing difficulty in driving in the traffic. Now of course the population will be having different heights. Okay? So I really cannot go simply selecting any sample because if by mistake in simple random sampling I select a sample having less heights, my population mean will be completely different from the sample mean. Okay? So what we do is we arrange them in the ascending or the descending order and then I will select every fifth element as in a systematic way. This is in a systematic way. So this type of sampling is called as systematic sampling where I place a certain rule for a sample to be selected. The next one is stratified sampling. The best example of stratified sampling is the exit polls. Now once the elections are conducted there are various exit polls which predict who is going to win the election. How do they do that? We cannot go to a certain locality and ask the people who we have voted for. Right? That will be completely biased opinion because a certain section of society will be voting for a certain person only. So what they need to do is they need to divide the complete population into different stratas. Stratas means actually different hierarchies or different levels. Now what to do? The whole country can be divided into different states, different states can be divided into different districts, different districts can be divided into different villages and from that we need to select a sample from each and every village or each and every district to get the exact chances of someone being elected. Okay? So the whole population is divided into different stratas that is called as stratified sampling. Okay? So the next type of sampling is cluster sampling. Now cluster sampling also means certain similar has certain similarity in the stratified sampling. In this the population in fact is divided into different groups. Suppose we need to uh, study the popularity of different mobile brands in the population. So what we do, we divide the complete population based on their income level you can say. Okay? Some having the lower income level, middle income level and the higher income level. So we can divide the population into the three parts, then select the number of samples from each and every cluster. These are called as clusters. Now we can select the sample from each and every cluster based on the number of population it includes. Okay? So this is called as cluster sampling. So these are the four different type of probability sampling we have seen. Now moving on to the non-probability sampling, the first one is convenience sampling. Convenience sampling, this is the sampling which is basically used to reduce the cost of sampling and to reduce the time. So convenience sampling basically means whoever is available and who is ready to conduct a research, the sample who is ready to conduct a research upon himself is selected as a sample. Okay? So convenience sampling, you can see many examples of convenience sampling, suppose in shopping malls we can see there are different interns which are placed to conduct a research on their shopping habits or in such a way for the credit cards and everything. 
okay so this is convenient sampling of selecting a sample which are readily available for conducting a research now this type of sampling does not actually give the exact results but it reduces the cost and the time required for the research the next one you can say is quota sampling now quota sampling is very important to study or you can say uh, you can consider a scenario where we need to study the ratings of the different tv channels or different tv serials you can say now quota sampling the name itself suggests we need to have a specific quota for a specific type of population now if you need to study about the tv serials we can say the majority of the population should be either children or women and to some extent some men so the so the sample to be selected should contain less number of men say 15% more number of women and children see around 85% 85% of the quota should go to either children or women and the 15% should go for the men okay so this is called as quota sampling the next one is judgment sampling now judgment sampling is completely based on what researcher thinks is fit for conducting a research for example you can see in many opinion debates on different tv channels news channels there are many guests which are invited to conduct some type of debate on a certain topic now those people who are invited for a debate are selected by the channel itself okay the one who conducts the research or the one who conducts the study on a topic selects the sample what the researcher feels is fit for conducting the debate and the last one is a snowball sampling the name says a snowball you can see a snowball when it slides down the hill it keeps on increasing the size of the snowball keeps on increasing right so exactly in the same way what happens in snowball sampling is researcher conducts a research on certain amount of people and then he asks for the references of the other people to the samples itself okay suppose we have a researcher who calls around three people and asks for certain questions on based on the research then he asks for the references from those samples to conduct a research on them so he doesn't the researcher doesn't go out to find out different samples he in fact tries to reduce his cost and effort by taking the references from the sample itself okay so this is snowball sampling so these are the different types of sampling method which can be used in different type of conditions